What up, Whiffle Nation? Anthony Stidham here back for his second hosting gig with the Huntington Wiffle Ball League podcast, episode 30. The big 3-0. I remember when I was 30. It was six years ago. So, let's uh, let's just uh, jump right in here. I have Josh Smith co-hosting, hosting, looking sexy. I'm How's 30. it going, Josh? I'm 30. You're 30 now? Yeah, I'm I thought you were older than me. That's what I say when people ask me how I am. I'm like, I'm 30. Okay. Well, I thought you were older than me. I'm kind of feeling oh bad my about God, myself. Oh, really? All right. Yeah. Wow. I've um, even been shaving. Oh. Me too. That's why I thought you were older than me. So, <laughs> damn. Hurtful. We wasn't talking about my balls, though. Yeah. Okay. I so, I well, I would like to see that later. Uh, so, <laughs> let's uh, let's kind of go over what we're going to talk about today. Sure. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about. The Greek Wolfology team that traveled to Ashland and uh, big trip. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, big road trip. Like twenty we miles. Did, we didn't get any mileage reimbursement for that for sure. Yeah, uh, um, we underachieved in Ashland, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Sure. And then uh, big announcement coming from Josh Smith uh, later on in the podcast. And then uh, we'll uh, talk about a season recap. The season's over. Congratulations, saved by the balls. You bunch of dicks. And um, then we'll uh, we'll talk about future future podcast and what we're going to go and do down the road. Sounds like a good episode. Sounds like a good episode. So uh, let's let's just take a, a quick break and then uh, we'll come back and talk about Amy for Africa. Welcome back. All right, Josh. So uh, you were a part of the fast pitch, Amy for Africa on Friday night. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> you know, I won't say that. <laughs> Not to you, anyways. Uh, um, and oh. then, and then we done slow pitch on Saturday. So l- let's recap Friday night. Sure. Friday night. Uh, uh, Friday night. It was a fun night. The Javonians was the best part of the night. Uh, it's kind of a time honored tradition. We uh, we underachieve in the tournament and then we eat Giovanni's until we uh feel better about ourselves that's how i eat pizza all the time to feel better about myself it doesn't work but I no mean, while you're there though it it, it kind of helps it kind of helps there's comfort in diabetes right absolutely uh diabetes um so <laughs> so what happens friday night we uh we show up we dominate the first team we played which uh um I'm not real proud of this. I'm going to say it. There were only four teams yeah. for the fast pitch, uh, which is okay. We which is okay. Sh- we beat the sheriff's department. We beat the Boyd County Sheriff's <laughs> Department like they owed us child support. Yeah, it was bad. So uh, we beat them. Jeremy Ray pitched a gym, a shutout. Mm-hmm. Uh, we rotated the field, uh, a couple of us. Bryce played the field pretty well. Josh Blair played the field really well. Um, I played third base a couple for a Yeah, bit. Josh, you, a couple plays. You, you made a couple plays. Uh, Patrick Rail played the uh, third base position for one play, got a ground out, and that was it. Now He did what he came to do. That's, he did. He did. <laughs> Moral he support. Know, that's a man that knows when to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's just let the listeners know real quick. The Amy for Africa tournament, their rules are – um, to ours. be as nice about it as I can, <laughs> night and day from ours. Yeah. The only rule they've adapted from the Huntington Football League rules are, or is the first pitch strikeout. I gotta commend them on that, man. That's the rule that normally uh, sets uh, us apart from the other leagues. They 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 hear about that rule and they're like, "Ooh, I don't know about that." Right. I, I gotta commend them on that. They they are all about it. Right. And Sam Beeson, the uh, the chairman of the Amy for Africa Football Tournament, uh, uh, actually implemented that minutes before the start of last year's. Mm-hmm fast pitch tournament after talking to a few of us and uh we we uh we appreciate that uh and it, and like you always say um imitation is the greatest form of of uh it's the highest form of flattery thank you yeah, thank you, know you. Who, uh, who i ripped that off from the Who's person that? who said it about uh us when we were ripping off their leg that's uh, <laughs> nice, carl, nice. Carl coffee about uh wsem and us ripping them off. hey listen that a uh, carl coffee mention yeah, we rip them off in any way even things they say about us that's right hey that's why we're huntington so uh if it ain't but, broken if it ain't broken we're not gonna we're not gonna break it anymore so uh that's not how that goes is it if it ain't broken it's not we're not gonna fix I don't know. it carl hasn't fuck said it, up. it better so i can't rip it off from him okay you, so. get on your game carl let us know what we gotta say so um 
so those rules are a little bit different. The ball has to be played before it stops rolling in the infield or caught out of the air. It has to be fielded clean. That's actually fielded clean. Yes. Wiffle ball, like right. wiffle ball ink. Yeah. That, that's that's actually they play closer to actual right. wiffle ball rules than we do. We play more like plastic baseball right. by their right. definition. So in fast pitch, you you pitch the opposing team. Obviously, there's there's uh there's three fielders. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The third baseman has to play behind the third baseline. Uh, their fields are set up magnificently. Magnificently, yep. they like mow down shorter where the baseline is. I, right, I freak, we did that. For the 2014 championship, Paul Hessen did that for us, and that's the way to go, man. Yeah. Like they they do it right. They only have two fields. They mm-hmm. don't have a lot of property to work with at that church. But they, they make play. it work. It's and I, 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 that's the first thing I said to them when they I, they and they're really polite too. They came and shook our hands uh, before right. we started playing. The people that run the tournament, and I was just like, guys, like it, it looked good last year, but they really outdid themselves this year. Yeah, Sam Beeson does a great job. Mark Maynard, uh, the media guy, he's uh, he's a contributor for the Daily Independent, Nashland. Um, actually, I think he's actually accepted a new position since then. Oh, okay. I'm not real sure where it's at. He's I read his stuff. He's a good writer. He's a great writer. Good photographer. He did yeah. Facebook live streams. Yeah, he's good a, commentator for the he's Facebook all, live. He's, he's all he, over. They it. have it. They have a big green monster on one field. Mm-hmm. They have a home run derby in the in in the uh, Saturday uh, slow pitch tournament. But going back to us, we uh, we beat the mortal shit out of the police department, which Josh Blair was happy about. Um, <laughs> Josh Blair. He's not black, by the he's way. He's not black. <laughs> he's not, but he is. Uh, it's getting he a is, weird place. He is. He is known for hitting police cars in Marinzi, Michigan, with home runs. <laughs> so uh, going back to 2015. Yeah. Uh, so um, we beat the Boyd County Sheriff's Department on on the field we were playing, and on mercy the other field too. we mercy roll. We and Jeremy, I'm telling you, Jeremy pitched a gym, a a a single digit hitter and a shutout. Mm-hmm. Pitched a gym. Um, I don't know who who was the manager of the team who put him in that position. Do you remember who the manager of the team was? No. It was me. Oh. It was me. I just don't want to give you the, the, the gratitude. Listen, <laughs> what, whenever that last podcast was, I think I gave you a bunch of gratitude for being in the Hall of Fame. So I, I really appreciate you not a uh, – or I don't appreciate you being an asshole. I, I jerked Greg off so much that I just – I don't have any more energy left. Listen, jerk you off those, wa- those walls were white when I left, but they weren't when I got there. That's right. So – we we beat uh, Boyd County Sheriff's Department. Um, Kona Ice, which is a a traveling shaved ice company. Mm-hmm. I've ne- they th- did they win it all last year too. They won it all at the fast pitch last year. I have year. yet to try any of their shaved ice, and they they it's it's not because it's not available. It's available the whole time we're there, and I'm just like nah. Yeah, they beat us uh, last year, and uh, the only thing I've tasted is the bitterness of defeat. Yeah, and they're good dudes, right? Yeah, like you can't hate them. And they're good players. Yeah, and they're good players. And natural and, talent, and, you know, they're not playing all the time. Right. This is it for them. Right. So they win their they win their semifinals match against oh whoever the heck they played. Um, at the this point, was, the other team wasn't slouching. They were no. a good team too. No. So in the championship game, it's a pitcher's duel. If you remember, it's a pitcher's duel. Uh, Bryce Clark pitched for us. Uh, hefty lefty, uh, throws hard, positions well when he throws, uh, and it's a pitcher's duel. Zero zero until. The uh, maybe the bottom of the third. Yeah, it came down to the. Uh, it was the third. third or fourth inning. Um, they, we only played like four inning games there, yeah. I think. And uh, Bryce gave up a, uh, it was a solo shot or two run shot. Blast. He walked one, and then the next guy hit a, home, a, a two run got, shot. We we were using these uh, these like uh, loco bats or something yeah. there, and all you gotta do is just put the bat on the ball if the velocity is right and. It, that's all that happened. I mean, he literally could have bunted that thing over the yeah. fence, and you just knew at that point. In the, in a fast pitch format, when you got two fast pitch pitchers that know what they're doing, like they did in this game, I don't know much about this Kona Ice team. I, I do know they participate in this tournament every year, so this guy practiced enough to. Mm-hmm. And we're pitching from like forty feet. Yeah, so. but we we hit that guy really well last year in a fast we pitch. Did. The guy that. And let me mention. Let me mention if you don't remember. Not only did he uh, did we lose two zero, but he pitched a shutout he did. against us. We didn't even get a hit, no. nor a walk. This guy had velocity, he had placement, and I would say he had pretty good defense behind him. But we didn't hit the ball to find out. Yeah, I mean, he just he knew what we were going to do, and I, all, I th- all it comes down is just one shot. It was, and I think we were the favorites going in because they saw what happened against the Boyd County Sheriff's we were Department. We the favorites last year too. We're, we're we're one of the few teams that come with uniforms. We mm-hmm. come with flash, come with flair. 
We talk the whole time yeah, we're there. We, we we talk to people and we try to cut back the smack because we're at church. But like, uh, so I do very little talking. Right. <laughs> we don't allow there. Josh Smith to yeah, say yeah, anything. I'm allowed to talk for he, a maximum of five seconds at a time. He nods his head and shakes hands. That's and what he does. If my if my front teeth on the top of my mouth touch my bottom lip to make a F sound, no one allows me to talk. So, no. um, so you know we're. We're rubbing elbows with people there, learning uh, about people and the cause and everything, and uh, you know we, we 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 become the favorites, and then we don't uh, deliver. That's kind of our thing. So. Underachieve, but I I do love traditions. Publicly, want to thank Sam Beeson and Mark Maynard, Amy Cumston and and Chris Cumston. Uh, great tournament, man. Uh, they they do a great job over there. And how long have they been doing it anyway? It's been at least five. Years. Four or five years. I've played in it every year. Yeah. Um, I've had a team every year. Obviously, gotten better over the years with my teams. Um, is there a website or something we can plug for? Them, right? There, yeah, they have a Facebook page, Amy for Africa. Um, it has a little, that has that touches on everything they do. They they have a wiffle ball tournament. They sponsor a high school football game. Uh, it's called the Liberty Bowl. They done it was Boyd County High School and Fairview High School in Kentucky this year because um, they're based out of Ashland, obviously. Love that uh, town, man. Ashland, it's, hey, listen, um, it's sleepy right. town, but it's a nice, it's a, clean. Fun town. It's across the creek from where I live in big old Arton, Ohio. So, uh, I worked in Ashland for two years. I really like it there. Ashland's all right. Ashland's all right. You actually worked in Flatwoods. Uh, or Russell, I'm sorry. I'm not, not to correct you. That's all but, right. uh, but, uh, Same metro area. You do not know what the fuck is going on. So, but no, they, they have, an, they have a uh, Facebook page. Um, check them out. Amy for Africa on Facebook. Uh, get behind the cause. Get behind the cause, definitely. And, and look out for their tournament because it's, it's getting, it's getting momentum. So, Going right on Saturday, thirty-six team slow pitch field. Uh, there's two games guaranteed. You lose a game, you're essentially done in the tournament. You have to go undefeated to win the tournament. Last year, Greek Ufology wins the first game. Uh, we lose the second game, and our game's and our day's over. So coming into this year, we built a good team. Josh Blair. Uh, yourself, Josh Smith, myself, Patrick Rail, Jeremy Ray, Andrew Westcott. Uh, am I leaving out anyone? I think that was it. We only had six people on the team. Uh, no, we had seven. Yourself, myself, Patrick, Josh Blair, Jeremy Ray, Bryce Clark. Who am I missing? Roush? Was it Roush on the team? No, Roush wasn't there. Whatever. Whoever I'm missing, I'm sorry, but you apparently didn't perform well. Um, show up. <laughs> or show up. No, I did. So, I was actually not able to be there. So, so. Uh, but Which Saturday, does, sure. <laughs> well, Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, we played 145 game. This tournament starts at 9. We had all day long to prepare mentally. Um, you pitch to your own player in a slow pitch uh, format, which is odd for us because we have a slow and fast pitched format, but we have pitchers in our league that can do things with the, with the ball on a slow pitch level that you can't do that against your own player because if yeah. you do, I mean, you're just screwing yourself. So um, we lose our first game. Our we lose our first game, which is puts us out of the tournament. We have a consolation game. They go out and dominate um, a team with a dad and his three kids on the team. So we felt good about ourselves by beating kids, um, preparing for next year. So we should just stop this league and join the NFL. If we right, right. Oh, ouch! Adrian <laughs> Peterson is on the line too. Um, so. We we underachieve in Amy for Africa again, so uh, we're hoping to um, it's good to have traditions. You know? It is. Listen, Giovanni's never on Saturday; always on Friday night after fast pitch. Um, I have no illusions of stopping going to that tournament. Uh, Greek Wolfology, a Greek Wolfology will make a turn. Will make an appearance again in 2018. Who knows with what team? I think our team this year was great. I think that team, fun. right, and I think that team going back next year would be a great thing, and I think we would we would do really well. Their rules really throw us for a loop. Yeah, we're used to almost traditional baseball. Really, we're all players at some at some level in our lives. So to go into a, an actual wiffle ball, ball format, it throws us off because we don't do that. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's it's their rules are much more closer to the actual wiffle ball rules than what we may. Uh, Give it credit for. I want to say one thing before we move on from this, though, is uh, there's this Patrick Swayze movie. Uh, this is my uh, advice for building a team for next year, uh, where if uh, he was like this traveling hobo dude who was with this boy, and he was struggling to succeed in baseball, and he had this philosophy that he taught this kid about wishing for the opposite, and it would come true. And he says, uh, 
imagine that you're going to suck at it, basically, and you'll be good at it. So I'm just saying we just sabotage ourselves next year for a team and just build the worst team we can find when we go all the way. I, I don't want to call anybody out. <laughs> but I do. So in 2016, is that right? We went to Marinty, Michigan. We take in 2016. We take a team to Rancy, Michigan, and at one point, I think we play a game of volleyball. I don't remember the player's name because, again, I don't want to call him by out, Paul Hessen. And <laughs> the ball is hit on a line drive, and he sends the ball over the fence. So I think if we want to sell ourselves short, put Paul on the team. Put Paul on the team. Um, definitely me show up on Saturday. That'll, definitely that'll you show up on Saturday. Yeah. That'll fuck it all up. Um, I've never been able. I've, I played on the team twice. I've yet to be there on a Saturday. Something I feel happens. maybe build, rebuild, set them on base. You know the the classic, you know, bridesmaid team mm -hmm. for years. We until, could at least get to the championship. Right, mm -hmm. right. Which we've done this year. So maybe I don't know. I don't know. Amy for Africa definitely a cheap plug here. Check out their website. Um, thank you, Sam Beeson, Mark Maynard, and please if you if you guys do listen to our podcast, apologize for the language. First of all, second of all. <laughs> um, God please, forgives. Right. Please, please come. <laughs> please come and uh, let's get you on a podcast. Let's get you guys to talk about your your cause and uh, and uh, for God's sake, change your rules. Um, one of us. One of us. One <laughs> let of let us. us win one. Yeah. My goodness. All right. Uh, so let's take a quick break. Uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about the uh, season we just finished up. Say by the balls, win it all, dicks, and uh, go on from there. We'll be right back. Yes, welcome back. Uh, let, let's let's Josh. Uh, let's take a few minutes here and talk about the season that was Huntington Wiffle Ball League 2017 in the books. Season five. Over again for the third time. Good congratulations riddance. to yeah, good riddance. Uh, congratulations to Saved by the Balls picks and uh, winning winning your the season overall season championship, winning three tournaments I believe overall. Mm -hmm. Or three tournaments for the season, and three then the, and, and, and uh and I, kudos to Andrew Westcott, man. He came prepared draft night. Yeah, we thought he was the bottom, but we now know Jeremy Ray is the bottom in that uh, relationship because uh, Andrew yeah. has done something he's not been able to do. He won it all without Jeremy Ray. He did, he did. And uh, Jeremy, if you're listening, that hurts me too because you were on my team this year, um, number one overall draft pick. I feel no pain. No pain. <laughs> you should, because uh, you were partying that a part of that beating we received in the last tournament in every game we played in. I was just happy to be there, honestly. Okay. Okay. Uh, you looked good in your red shirt, by the way. Thanks. Red's my collar. It is. It Power brought out your color. eyes. It brought out your eyes. Mm -hmm. So what we do know at this point is the uh, Say by the Balls won the overall championship. Thunder Ducks, which on paper, and I have to apologize for the Thunder Ducks uh, Team Tuesday never getting posted. I did write it. It was never posted on the on the website. That's on me, and I wish Thank I could you. say I was sorry, but he's not. I'm not really. I'm going to try to get on there. So on paper, you find it. On paper, the Thunder Ducks were built for success from day one. Uh, pitching, fielding, hitting, they were they were built, and then uh, they end up in second place. Uh, respectable finish. It is. But what could have been? Let's talk about this <laughs> for just a second. Oh, man. Let's talk about the debacle that was. The 10 points. The 10 yeah. dreaded points. Andrew Westcott, if you're listening right now, I'm going to give you... No, I'm not. Fuck you. So, <laughs> there's 10 points here that, you know, that there was a tournament to debacle and... This goes back to June. This goes back to June and, yeah. and, and Andrew Westcott and Say by the Balls. Um, do I want to say might have been? Or... Listen, the tournament the, bracket was was not made, was not prepared the way it should have been. This all comes back to the committee. There there was some shortcomings, and I don't want to take it personally because I wasn't on the committee. But it's just that there there was a mistake made in the seating process after round robin. 
uh, saved by the balls, lost to one of the farm teams, which uh, if the bracket would have been done as it's always been done, uh, they would not have been playing this farm team. They would have been playing another team. A team the Liftway Hit Wonders. They already, That's who they would have played. They had already beaten and most yeah. likely would have. So they didn't win that tournament, which is not the issue. They finished lower than what they probably would have if mm -hmm. the seeding had been done correctly for that bracket. So they were just uh, 10 points ahead of uh, the Thunder Ducks in the standings at that point. And there was some heated debate about how to rectify that, if there should be a playoff between uh, the two teams to try mm -hmm. to settle the score. Ultimately, nothing was done, which I agree was the a right well, move. Well, I, right I want to say, I don't know that nothing was done. There was a bunch yeah. of, there was, there was a ton of different ideas brought up. Mm -hmm. But going into the August tournament, there wasn't an August tournament. Yeah. We had the four planned, and the committee decided, let's do a fifth, let's do a fifth tournament. Yeah. We still got some summer left. We got we got plenty of time left, and this may help rectify the mistake of mm -hmm. the ten points because it gives those teams both an extra you know an extra tournament to to uh, succeed and get those those ten points back. So you know there was there was talks of those two the two teams that should have been playing play each other and whatever. It would have been hard to get the same guys back and yeah. people and then then oh well that guy wasn't playing. You know who you are, Andrew. You had a bitch about it. There so, was no way to do that without breaking the wheel. I'm right, afraid. right. So there was really no fair way to go about it. There was a mistake made. As a committee, we tried to rectify it the best we could, best way we could, adding a, another tournament, which doesn't hurt anybody. Everybody likes playing with football. Yeah. Playing another tournament, done it. So what might have been? August comes around, and let's just say, for the better sake of uh, no arguments here, Thunder Ducks beat, say, by the balls in the championship. Now, if the tournament would have played out correctly, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Say by the ball, still have a 10-point lead. But if the Thunder Ducks would have won, won that tournament, they would have tied. Right. Which would have forced the hand of the committee to make a decision, which would not have been an easy one. And in my opinion, you've got, like, one choice at that point. They play another game. Right. But... Then again, I could see that one or both of those teams would argue, let's just end it. No one wants to not win. Right. But only six trophies were made right. for each player on the winning team. So um, it would have been a very interesting development. One that I'm shocked didn't happen because it wouldn't be HWL, right. to quote Patrick, <laughs> if it wasn't jacked up in some form. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that didn't happen because I felt that, that that probably would have definitely uh, ruffled some feathers and maybe uh, – made some people part ways on uh, bitter terms. So the the thing that happened that most of us thought was going to happen since uh, May when it was clear that Saved by the Balls had not only a talented roster but a faithful roster. Right. But Thunder Ducks, I think, maybe had the most participate participatory roster. I mean, you had Greg Sowards uh, and a bunch of other teams. Uh, your team, unfortunately, just – Listen – I know you it, you have a lot to say about that, but your team – I do. On paper, first of all, you had the number one draft pick. TJ Harrison was the captain of the team. We we You and I played on a team. He came and played on our team, make Wolf Walk great again in the last tournament or two the year before. He's not a horrible player. He played well. Uh, he, he, Once he, he figured it out. He caught on well. Um I mean, you're you've you have your merits uh, offensively, and you can hit the zone. So I knew during fast pitch, you guys would be uh, you'd be able to relieve in, in uh, necessary moments. And Pat Horton. That's all I need to Patrick say. Pat Horton. Nobody knew anything about him, but uh, we all learned very quick after that first tournament that the dude could throw. And your your team, I think, if we're going to talk about what could have been your team, although you finished, you know, in the top three, which isn't saying much when you look at the grand scale of how the, the season panned out, in my opinion, but you finished where you should have, but you didn't meet the full potential that I thought you guys could have gone to. We didn't really talk a lot about power rankings and stuff after uh, the, right. the draft itself when we had that show, but I, I had you guys picked for top two easy, yeah. um, and you just weren't able to do that because you didn't have enough people show up, and I wish I could say your team was the only team that had that trouble, but it wasn't. You, you were just a team that had the most trouble out of there. The team mm -hmm. I was on, Asthmatics, also had trouble. Uh, I actually played on your team yep. in the August tournament because nobody else on my team was able to make it. So it, it was a common theme for teams like your team and mine and the Rocket Boys who just dropped out altogether after, the I think, the May tournament. So mm -hmm. um, we just had 
some trouble getting teams to the field consistently and the teams we did get there we had teams getting uh, getting them there with them actually being full strength or even being able to compete honestly let me ask you a question josh do you feel as if I the a lot of things I, I do i know you do right like right now at my shorts um do you feel like the back and forth pitching format had anything to do with teams showing up i don't know man it's it's probably several things. Life's complicated, you know, and uh, I, I would say it didn't help. Um, this was this year was no different than years before. We different things were done, and uh, 2016 was a we went from a fast pitch league in 2015 to a slow pitch league. That was right. really downshifting, and um, but well, the most teams in the league ever. I, 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 Ten teams. 100 percent correct. I agree with you, but uh, we a lot of people. We're, we're getting a faction of people who are saying, like, let, let, not, let's give it the gas again. Mm -hmm. And then the committee at the time was all like, you know what? Let's dip our toes in both pools here and see what happens. And give the people what they want on this end and then give the other people what they want over here. Sounds like a great idea. I'm, I'm a very compromising person. Man. It just it didn't pan out well. And 2017 was just like 2016 with the pay-as-you-play format, uh, format. And, uh, you know, you pay your 10 bucks. If you don't want to come back May, June, or whatever, you don't have to. If you only want to right. play slow pitch, you can play half a season. I thought that was, you know, agreeable for everybody involved. But uh, It was definitely a bold way to go for the committee. And oh, yeah. Being a part of the committee, I have to – it was a bold way to go. And Fast pitch is fun to watch. Horrible to play if you suck at it. And slow pitch <laughs> brings the people out. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's, it's the populist version of wiffle ball. You don't have to like it, but uh, like you said before, the facts speak for themselves. We had 10 teams play in 2016. The favorite team I've ever played on was during the slow pitch era in 2016. Agreed. And I had a great time. I don't know if that's just because the, the team was right, it was a good fit at the time, or if it was just because it was slow pitch, I probably would have had fun regardless. I'll right. never know that because it's the only season we've ever done that with. Right. But I, I do think there's probably a little bit to that logic, I see where you're getting at, but uh, I, I I see what you're doing, and I'm not disagreeing. I'm just I wonder if that's it, if that's the right. linchpin for this year. I wonder. Right. Well, you know, and the only reason I say that is is just because there were there were teams that were very consistent in 2016 on the slow pitch level, and players mm -hmm. who showed up for week or tournament one, which was fast pitch this year. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see a lot of them after that. Yeah. That's my basis for why I Rocket say that. Rocket boys mainly. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, you know, they, they to my knowledge, they are, no, they know how to play slow pitch. That's no. that's pretty and much. And they're younger uh, guys, too, who can probably hang in fast pitch, but that's not what they want to do. Right, right. Bryce absolutely. Sleep is actually a, a college ball player. Great ball he, player. I think he even pitches as well. So, I mean. Yeah. And, you got, and I've played some softball with him. He's, he's an athlete. Yeah, and you got I mean, Miles and you got Seth on that team as well. And it's just. Uh, you know, they're, they're not unathletic guys. They're probably some of the more and they, athletic. And they kept their league. core together after yeah. the draft. I mean, yeah. they, they were essentially the Rocket Boys. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like the Mothman or the Saved by the Balls, so those the, guys. The stars really aligned for them. I, I, I have to wonder if we would have kept the same format if they yeah. – but you know they would have finished in the top three yeah. probably. So. But you know what? We'll see what the future holds. Disappointing. We'll see what the future holds. 2017 is in the books. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, yeah. Saved by the Balls. Absolutely. Fantastic jersey, too. It was. It was a good jersey. I I, uh, I, th I feel like everyone done pretty well with jerseys this year. Mm -hmm. Probably the best since I've been a part of the league. Yeah. I think uh, every – The original five teams. The majority of the teams. Yeah, the, the five teams from the beginning of the season and the draft all had jerseys. I mean, the Rocket Boys are included in that, but they had their original team – from their yeah, jerseys, they, they uh, so, their so they had their jerseys. Yeah. Uh, Thunder Ducks, uh, the pretty decent jersey, dumbass sleeves. Yeah. Um, say by the balls. Off. Yeah, cut they were stupid. Off. Come on, Bryce. Um, say by the balls again. Great, look great looking jersey. Andrew Westcott with the mastermind behind that. Asthmatics just did a revamp of the 2015 jerseys. Mm -hmm. Look, I love that they, gray. And I do. Dark. I do. Uh, I like blue. it. Oof, yeah, it looks so good. good. And then the Whiffle Hit Wonders, my team. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Westcott with the uh, Andrew Westcott with the. Uh, the logo, but the Whiffle Hit away Wonders. Home jerseys, too, though. Yeah, white yeah. and red, man. Come on. Yeah, that, uh, I got the red home jersey. Yeah, so, I'm a big fan. So, listen, you know, jerseys were a big thing this year. It was probably the best part of the Whiffle Hit Wonders. I'll say that. Yeah. So, uh, Dude, look good, play good, or you look good, look good. I mean, right. I've never looked good, play good, but I look good, <laughs> have fun. So. Well, listen, there was a tournament um, that the Whiffle Hit Wonders had a chance to win it. Mm -hmm. We went into the tournament, the number two seed, 
Jeremy Ray wasn't at that tournament. <laughs> I'm not mentioning Secret that. Secret ingredient to success is having Jeremy Ray on the team and then not playing. <laughs> I'm not throwing that out for any reason. Uh, but we didn't finish very well at all. Savage. So, uh, you know what? I think you, to be the host of this show, you have to be a little savage. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree. I like I'm that. Not even mad about that. I, I love that it. It says a lot about me. It does say a lot about it. I'll, I'll say all kinds of stuff about you. So, anyways, be that as it may, again, it's not, it's it's in the books. 2017 over. So, um, let's not reflect on it too much. It's over, and we'll see what happens going forward with the committee. Speaking of the committee, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll come back. And Josh Smith, uh, I'll let him make a major announcement concerning HWL in the future. So let's take a quick break. Spoiler, we're folding. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Welcome back. So, the HWL this year took a huge step in a unknown territory. Something that a lot of leagues, if any, don't do. A lot of gay stuff. A lot of gay stuff. Um, that's why we included five men in what I'm about to talk about. So, Patrick Rail in 2016 ran the league by himself. With a little help from you, obviously, as needed and as available. Um... Greg Sauer is still involved in that too with the with the equipment. I mean, just a, a daunting job, the equipment manager. So at the end of 2016, the idea was brought up to form a committee, a multiple person committee to run this league. Now, there were names thrown out, and um, and I don't care to, to throw them out there. Uh, you know, Rick Patterson was was a name that was thrown out. Commitments with football with his kids and things like that kind of took him away he wasn't able to uh patrick staying on was one myself jeremy ray obviously being the face of the league uh you guys you and greg stepping away so there was some some spots that needed to be filled so um and i'll just go down the, the real quick history first meeting was a meeting of jeremy ray patrick rail myself and bryce clark once we knew that rick patterson couldn't join a, a committee we decided to throw some names out. Um, all good, all good guys, great guys, a part of the league that have a a good outlook on what the league wants to be. But we ultimately came to the decision that Josh Blair was that fifth man for us, and uh, so began the the five man committee that ran the 2017 Huntington Football League, with some bumps, but not in the committee. The committee we done well with each other. We met. We talked things out. It was a great committee. Kudos to you and Greg and whoever for bringing a lot of us together. Yeah. We worked together, and everybody had their own thing to bring to the to the committee. Um, unfortunately, going into 2017 or going into 2018, sorry, uh, we'll go through another change. And I only say unfortunately because we're losing one of the committee members uh, for no other reason than just wants to spend more time with the wifey. Which is respectful. So, respect with that, that, with that being said, Josh, I will uh, let you make your announcement and let you let you tell them who uh, who's dipping out. All right, um, Patrick Rail, uh, one of the foundational members of the committee. Um, the, the committee originally was Greg, myself, Patrick, and I had uh, selected Rick Patterson, as uh, Anthony mentioned earlier, Anthony himself, and Jeremy Ray. It's going to be a six-man committee. I was probably just not going to be a, a, a voting member and just run things uh, on my end while everybody else did their thing. I, I created this committee so it wouldn't burn out whoever was the commissioner at the time. I, I saw that Patrick was getting very tired. Um, he was being uh, fought on some things, and uh, it's a thankless job. And during tournament day, a lot of people just come to you with their problems. So uh, I decided, I was like, hey, we should just do this, do this committee instead. And... Uh, I was very pleased that uh, when I stepped away, I had some family obligations I had to attend to. 
I expected maybe that uh, we would fail this year um, since we didn't really get a chance to explore this committee much <laughs> prior to. I had no reason to think that it was going to be a smashing success like it has been this year on the administrative level. So for that, I'm very uh, surprised and grateful and uh, uh, very thankful for um, the season we've had this year with uh, this style of running it. Um, but Patrick has uh, decided to step away. Uh, things have kind of cleared up for me a little bit, and I expressed uh, interest in helping, not necessarily being on the committee. Uh, uh, I was going to help uh, more than what I have been able to lately, and Patrick decided that uh, he would take this opportunity to take more time for uh, personal time uh, with his wife, and he travels a lot for work, and just having more personal time, and that's respectable, and he's uh, definitely paid his dues. He was a commissioner in 2016, and I'm sure uh, a very uh, 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 vocal leader in the committee this year. Absolutely. Since he was the only one on the committee that had any administrative uh, experience in the league, so I'm sure he's a guiding light. Uh, you can't discount the footprint Patrick has left in his wake in this league. He's still going to be playing, so uh, he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's still going to be around, but uh, he, he's now going to be able to not half must be there. So uh, if make no mistake about it, I don't think I've ever said it on this podcast, but I've said it to people thousands of times. There would not be a Huntington Wiffle Bowl League right now, Anthony, if Patrick Rail had never came. I, I agree. Nobody else was ready to take this league over in 2016. He agreed to, which he and I both, now that we've done it, uh, both can say, that was a crazy idea. Why'd you do that? Right. <laughs> so uh, he, he ran that league. Uh, he, did, he made a lot of choices and decisions that weren't popular but were necessary. He, he was uh, the right person at the right time wasn't a popular commissioner uh, who is but he he made that just insane uh recommendation that we go to slow pitch and play once a month on a saturday and i was like that is insane let's totally do that right and, <laughs> and, and it was a success going back it's yeah. 10 teams yeah 10, 10 teams. freaking teams i man. never had more than eight when i was a commissioner we had seven this you year. could argue and I will, that he was a better commissioner than me based on participation that year. He came up with an idea that grew the league. That is the commissioner's job, is to not only keep the league functioning, but leave it better than when you found it. And he's the only other person in the league that's ever done it. I hope we never just have a, a commissioner again because it just burns you out. You can I ask agree. anybody that's ever done that, not just wiffle ball, just anybody who's ever been the boss. It sucks. So... um you know he he's he's come up with several ideas. Uh, he's he's swallowed his pride several times for the betterment of this league. He's sacrificed immeasurably personal time uh, to this league to make it what it is now and what it has been in the past. And you just can't count him out. He deserves all the recognition that anybody else in this league has ever gotten. So, um, but I will be taking his spot. The committee voted uh, for me to uh, take the spot. I, I, I think there was a couple other people that were under consideration for the spot, but uh, people voted for me, uh, unfortunately. And Yay, <laughs> Timmy! And I'm back, but I'm pulling my 20%. So if uh, those of you that are thinking uh, the Josh Smith days are back, they are not. I obviously have respect for this committee since I had a hand in forming it. So uh, I intend to... Um, be one of the five spokes in the wheel that will be turning as we go into 2018. So uh, the tor the uh, committee is still very much in uh, functioning order here. I'm just part of it now. So um, we will be kind of regrouping, it looks like, over the off season here to find the fit for who's doing what and then be planning 
on what we're going to do in 2018. But I know our first order of business is going to be working with Bradley Burke on the uh, Hallow Wiffle Tournament, the third annual Hallow Wiffle to raise money for the Hoops Children's Hospital at Cabell Huntington in Huntington, West Virginia. That is scheduled for October 21st. So we'll, that will be our first uh, thing we do together. Right. So uh, and and Right I, now that's about all the information we have, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that's all we have. But in coming weeks, we'll definitely have some information on the website. Pay attention to that. Uh, Maybe in the next podcast, even if we yeah, do one prior sure. to the tournament, uh, we'll maybe spell some information. Let me be the first. Welcome back. Thanks, man. Welcome back. And uh, surprised you let me back, but well, you know, um, sexually it was a good idea. Yeah. So I, I do want to say I don't feel like um, I, I agree with you, Patrick Real. Unsung hero. Fingerprints are all degree. over this league and my genitals. So. But I don't feel like uh, I don't feel like the the committee is going in a in a negative direction. No. I feel like with having someone that's um, Hall of Famer, let's bring that back up. Oh God! Um, a Hall of Famer on the committee, someone who uh, loves the game of wiffle ball, which is the most important thing for the committee. Uh, having the game first, not so much your own uh, uh, goals or your own vendetta. Love for the game is the first thing the committee has to have, and uh, yeah, winning as a goal is just definitely not there for me. <laughs> well, you you've, why, why disappoint myself? You have one. You have one. You you got the uh, this yeah. prestigious plaque, but right. you know five man committee. Uh, it was great this year, and with the four returnees and and somebody like you, Josh, I feel like that uh, Huntington Wiffle Ball League is going in the right direction. Uh, again, blazing a trail. That no one is doing right now. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so, every 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 commissioner and, and and other leagues they have people that are helping. Why leave them in the shadows, man? Put them in right. the light. Right. And and also when they screw up, put them in the light because yeah. you know we have room to grow as a committee, and we're going to, and we're gonna we're gonna make the league what you and Greg and Jeremy envisioned it, Jeremy Lydon envisioned it to be whenever it came to Huntington. Uh, so, again, welcome. Glad to have you. So. Uh, let's uh let's take another break and uh you guys bring that all in josh smith is back bring that all in and uh we'll be back in a second got some more information coming at you back uh josh i, I think uh i think we're going to do what kobe didn't do in colorado and wrap this thing up um <laughs> wow. i told you you a said it. NBA it's sh- savage on this show <laughs> so so future episodes let's talk about that for just a split second before yeah, we before we wrap this up i guess we're gonna have some wrap it up we're gonna have some episodes episode 30 essentially in the books 31 we're looking at uh Having a guest on, Tim Wilcher, mm-hmm. Leroy Wiffle Association Commissioner. Former arch enemy. Former arch enemy. I, you say former, but... We actually have much more in common with their league than you would think. He and I had a very good conversation and talked about uh, being on a podcast together. And uh, I think it'll be an interesting podcast. And uh, you know a lot of people are going to want to listen to it anyway. Uh, he and I were actually on a Two Wiffle Dudes episode together and... Uh, we had some very good conversations, so I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with him more and having people from our league actually listen. And right. Hopefully people from his league listening, too. Absolutely. So, uh, very, very like-minded league when you think about it. I, I myself looking forward to, to talking to him, especially as a as a committee member and, and hearing him. I want to I see what his thoughts are on what we're doing mm-hmm. as a committee. I mean, you guys may have touched base on that, but... Let's get him on air and see what he thinks about a five man and or a four or a three man, whatever the committee may be. Yeah. Let's get his let's get his views on that. And uh that'll be exciting. Getting another commissioner on the league or on the line. Uh we don't often have guests from other leagues. We right. we did that when we first started, like the first dozen episodes, but that's not something we've done much, so I would like to get back into it. It'd be it. nice to reach out to other leagues and see if they're interested totally. in because it because it, it really it helps their league too. If, if they can you know, if we let them shamelessly promote their league on our on our podcast and you know i think they're trying to get into podcasting too a lot of leagues used to have podcasts it's down to like 
two, three leagues now doing podcasts. Listen, this is the way to go. You, know, you sit in a room, you get drunk, and you talk about wiffle ball. Yeah, it's easy. What's the best? What's better than that? Easy. I mean, if I had some food, it'd be better. But you know, whatever. It is what it is. I, I, I made my offers. You did. You did. Sexually. And uh, episode food, food. thirty-two. Episode thirty-two. Thirty-two bit. Sega and PS1 soundtracks, soundtracks. shenanigans. Jeremy, Jeremy Lynn's Lynn. going to be Jeremy running Lynn. the pr- the production, so you know it's going to be good. We'll be looking back on some fun stuff. Alcohol will be flowing. Words will be said. Hopefully, cohesion will be present. Well, as well. <laughs> you know, I I I look forward to that one just to kind of. Rain everybody because you know how I am. Yeah. We've I, not done this since episode 16 for 16 bit. It's right. Been a long time. Well, you know, 16 is half it. Uh, Whatever. Let's not do math. I think it was 2015. So. Let's not do math. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Jeremy Ray hosted that episode, I think. Jeremy Ray. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe Jeremy Ray comes back. Yeah. Let's just get the whole gang together. Let's, I, let's if just, we can get the, the whole league in one room, let's do it. I think they'll fit in this room right here. Maybe. I think they will. Best seat in the house on my lap. I like it. Take yeah. off your shoes at the door. Anthony doesn't do that. I wasn't told to. <laughs> um, but fuck him. Yeah. So episode thirty two will be fun. I, somebody else, if I can interject here, is episode thirty three. I'd like to get Tim Stewart on here. Tim Stewart, uh, for those who have been around a long time, knows that he used to run the Eastern Tennessee Wiffle Ball League, who which may or may not have ever existed. He he seemed to fold the league every year. It it it, it just reincarnated itself every year, and this year. He's he, he's hit oil, and started this uh, uh, like a regional, national, budding uh, tournament thing going on. That's uh, he's wanting to compete with the NWA and maybe even Fast Plastic is kind of the format he's going for. We actually had a team go down. Only two guys showed up, but they they hung in there best they could. How, and how many they team? had uh, two two guys went. I, how I, many guys? Two of our guys went and played on. A was team there two guys? Two dudes. Was that the whole team? That was it. it was was just, that was that the original plan? No. Okay. I was asked that to go a, like five hours before they left, and I was like, "Yeah, thanks for the heads up, guys." Um, is, so, that, is that a subject for another show? Maybe totally. Two people. Pretty much. Two people. Two. J Ray. Um. So subliminally. But basically, uh, uh, Roush and Clark had nothing but good things to say about that tournament. So I'm interested in hearing what uh, Tim Stewart is doing down there. What's going on? In Tennessee, what's in the water? So that could be a good episode 33. And beyond that, we'll be in the off season. Maybe we do some more episodes with other people. Maybe get in touch with uh, Cincinnati, Greater Cincinnati Wiffleball League. Who yeah. knows? Let's 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 uh let's reach out and see what's going on in Wiffle Nation uh, around the area outside of Huntington. So I, that could be some good episodes. Yeah, there. and if I, can, if I can, if I can, any listeners out there, uh, jump on the Huntington Wiffleball page and say, hey. Try this. We're always up for anything new. Uh, if you have an idea that you want us to touch base on, you have an, uh, someone you want us to talk to, mm-hmm. uh, you have something you shamelessly want to promote while talking coherently on the, online, yeah, do please it. do. Get on there and we'll uh, we'll listen to you. We'll talk to you. And uh, Josh, I, again, sincerely appreciate the second opportunity to host a show. Um, super fun. Super fun. And, uh, I mean, you know, my first job was a Hall of Fame one, so yeah, no I, pressure I there. You, I only bring you in on the important ones. Now. No pressure there. <laughs> Season recap, Amy for Africa. Um, this was a pretty important show. Big announcement from Josh Smith. Yeah. So uh, hope to come back and host another show, co-host, uh, shamelessly harass Jeremy Ray on on the air. Whatever you need, buddy. I'm I like here. It. I like it. I'll definitely enjoy having you host again. Uh, and if if you're new to listening to the podcast, know that we have 29 other episodes to listen to. You can find all our episodes at HuntingtonWithBall.com. Click on Media and then Podcasts. We ha- we upload all of our episodes to, to YouTube where you can listen to in a browser and share. And we also have been uploading our most recent episodes from this year up to this episode onto Podomatic. You can find it at HuntingtonWiffle.Podomatic.com. There you can download the episodes. Also, if you're an iPhone user or use iOS, you can go to your podcast app and search Wiffle or HWL Podcast, find our podcast, and subscri- subscribe. Woo! Subscribe. <laughs> wow. And download episodes from there. Share. Subscribe. Listen. Get involved. Ask us questions. We normally post ahead of time when we're going to be doing an episode. Ask us questions. Uh, 
So that's all that uh, we really have to talk about on this episode, Anthony. Uh, any other last words? You know, nothing uh, Nothing of importance. I uh, do want to say, uh, for me, uh, thank you to Patrick for uh, running the league proficiently by himself and then being a great committee member and another and a teammate Respect. on the committee uh, with me this year. Uh, looking forward to seeing him on the field, and uh, and uh, I still think he's an asshole, but I love him. <laughs> All right, uh, signing off for Josh Smith. Thanks again. I'm Anthony Stidham. Hey, we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>